Alright, welcome to a PMD Jetstream J41 uh, tutorial part 3 for 2.0, my 2.0 series. And today we are going to be going over uh, the FMC and payload. So let's jump inside here and get going. So, um, as you can see, I have the engine shut off right now to reduce the noise levels. And uh, so if you look over to the left, you'll see that we have our payload management sheet and uh, it's pretty uh, it's pretty easy to flow through let me just go through the, the basic layout so on the left we got our passengers um, each row can hold uh, two uh, two passengers per row a total of 20 passengers now if you want you can add a jump seat passenger um, and that way it will be calculated in as well um, so you got your number of passengers per row and then uh, they're also separated into sections so section A, section B, section C and the total will come out to 20 if you have it all full so we're going to leave it at full for my tutorial um, and like I said you can add a jump seat, I'm not going to uh, then underneath that you have carry-on which you can add each carry-on is 10 pounds and that will go into the closet weight over there um, and then you got your flight duration so for our flight today we're going from uh, Daytona Beach to uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. It will probably take about an hour in this aircraft, so I'm put 1.0. That just changed your landing weight configuration. Um, this is all pretty much simulating weight for the center of gravity, so be careful with the, uh, if you're messing around with the numbers, make sure you're trying to evenly space them out so you're not out of CG. Um, next, we move over to our weight and balance worksheet on this side, on the right side and we got our ACM so if you add a uh, jump seat you'll automatically get 180 in for the jump seat um, you got your basic operating weight which is unchangeable that's just the default BOW for uh, this aircraft that PMDG entered uh, your uh, ACM uh, air crew member your full weight uh, which is the weight of the passengers so that will change if you decrease the passengers and you got your aft cargo your pod cargo, which is the belly cargo, um, your closet, which is the carry-ons, 10 pounds per carry-on, uh, zero full weight, fuel minus taxi, and takeoff weight. So let's go back up to the aft um, weight. The typical uh, weight for passenger in the aft pod for passenger flight is about 600 pounds for, for a normal passenger flight. So let's just put it in there for fun. And for the pod, it's about 250. So I'll put that in there as well. Okay, we're not gonna have anything in the closet. Um, and, I mean, if you want to, you can add like a couple if you want to. Um, and then uh, our zero fuel weight and our fuel minus taxi. Fuel minus taxi is fuel uh, minus 100 for taxi. It's about 100 for a small field, 200 for a larger field. Uh, we're not going very far, so I'll stick with 100. Uh, with fuel, let's go ahead and talk about fuel. So we know that's about an hour of fuel. Right now I'm holding uh, 1,468 in each tank, which is more than we ever need. For the Jetstream Day 41, and I, I remember in my last tour, someone asked me if there was a way to calculate fuel. Well, I was reading through the manual, and I found out that for about an average flight, it's about 1,000 to 1,200 pounds per hour of fuel. So we're about an hour and it's about 1,000 pounds per hour, so we're probably going to burn about 1,000 pounds. Um, plus, um, we also have the 800 pounds of reserve fuel that you must have. So I'm going to bump that up just in case. I'm going to just put 200 extra pounds in there and give us 2,000 pounds of fuel. Well, how much is 2,000 pounds of fuel? Well, fuel weighs about 6 to 6.5 pounds per gallon. So we got 2 pounds uh, or 2,000 pounds of fuel. Um, and 2,000 divided by 6.5 is about 308 gallons of fuel, roughly. So let's go into our aircraft and go in fuel and payload. Now if you want to, you can change the fuel and you can display fuel as weight, which makes it easy. Um, and let's just bring these numbers down. Or we can go ahead and do the gallons too, it doesn't matter. We know we need about 308, so we know we need like 154 gallons in each tank. Should give us that number, correct? Hopefully, if my math is right. Let me see. 
308. Yep, there we go. 308. 154 gallons in each tank will give us what we need. And if we display that as weight, about 2,066 uh, pounds. So that's about what we want. Okay, that's good. So that is all fine and dandy. So now our fuel minus tax is saying we have 5,885 pounds of fuel on board. That is totally incorrect. We know that we have 1,033 in each tank or 2,066 pounds of fuel. So we're going to go ahead and bring that back. 2,066. Uh, now minus 100. That's going to come down to 1,966 if I'm correct. Okay, I was just double checking. It might be easy math, but you don't want to be wrong there. <laughs> all right, so that is our weight. So we got our weight all set up there. Everything else is not really needed to be worried about right now. We got that basically done, and you can just click that top part to hide it if you want to. It doesn't matter. All right, now comes the fun part. The part that most people are looking for is the... Um, FMC. So you're going to pull up your FMC, go ahead and click on it, or you can click Shift 3 and then click on. It's going to do a self-test for a little bit, aligning the IRS, all that fun stuff. Um, and you're going to press Enter a few times to initialize it. And then we're going to start out with our departure. So we're going to depart. And we're going to go ahead and go KDAB. I'm in Daytona. So put in your departing airport, KDAB, press Enter twice. Uh, we're going to Lima 5 departure. And I know I said last time we were going to take off runway 3-4, but seeing where I'm at and seeing that the actual direction that I want to take off is to the south, I'm going to take off runway 1-6, which is right next to me. So, threw you a curveball there. No worries, though. It's no big deal. What we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and choose runway 1-6. And it's going to give me the uh, Lama 5 departure in there as well. So. Let me go over this to be clear on it. We got our departure. We're departing from KDAB, uh, Daytona Beach. Runway 16, our standard instrument departure that we're going to use, the LAMA 5. We went over that in the last tutorial for the, uh, for the uh, flight plan tutorial. Uh, transition of Bitho. Now that I'm going to change. Or, no, no, no. Bitho is the right transition. The way we get to Bitho is what I'm going to change. But that's the whole flight plan. So you get your runway 16, standard departure, or Lama 5, and transition to Bitho, which is correct. Go ahead and click enter. And now looking at this, we're going to go so far we got runway 16 to Bitho via heading 162 to Lama to Jessup to Bitho. Now, if you look at the, 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 the chart, you'll see that Lama is pretty much right next to runway 16. So it'd be pretty much. Uh, take off and do a straight beeline to Lama. I don't want to do that. I want to make it nice and smooth for the passengers. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of Lama. So just click the double one twice, click the back button over here, and press enter to delete it. Now we're going from Lama 16, heading 162, Jessup to Bitho. That's a much better turnout when we uh, uh, leave the runway. That'll be a lot easier. Okay, so now we're going to get into the route. So go ahead and go put your cursor over the stars so you can edit it. And I'm going to go back to Sky Vector and look at my route. Okay, so after Bitho, we said we're going to go to Bluffy. So you're going to go ahead and just type it right on it. B-L-U-F-I. Spell it right or else it won't work. Um, good. Now after that... Did I put that in right? Hold on. Yes, okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, and then after that, I know I said that our departure is going to be to uh, Bluffy, then to Treasure. Well, the thing is, um, Treasure is kind of, uh, hold on, I think I did that wrong. Let me check this double. Oops, yep, I did that wrong. My bad. Okay, uh, delete Bluffy. That's not supposed to be there yet. I was looking at the wrong flight plan. Okay. Oops, come back, come back. There we go. Okay, so delete Bluffy. After Bitho, remember we're going to Treasure. Um, but this FMC, I didn't update it yet. And Treasure used to be 0 B to be, uh, uh, VOR. So we're going to go ahead and type in VRB um, as our next waypoint. 
BRB, enter, enter. Because in the last tutorial I showed you we're going to go from Bitho to Treasure TRV. But that changed to, uh, that was changed. It originally was Vero Beach VOR. And now it's uh, Treasure VOR. And I I don't know, I've been looking for the update for this, but I don't, I look at them, it doesn't say it includes the jet stream uh, for the FMC data. But I'm just going to go ahead and stick with what I got in here. And no, it's VRB. So we're going to go Bitho to VRB. And then from VRB, we're going to Bluffy. Or we're following the J45 to Bluffy. Yes. So we're going to go ahead and put the air route in there, the, the jetway. To put a jetway in there, you go ahead and press the pound sign, then the J, or if you're doing airway, um, uh, Victor Airway, V, uh, or any type of any other ones, you know, you put that letter in. So number pad, or pound, and then J, or A, or V, or whatever it is, and 45, enter, and then it'll give you what to what. So remember I was telling you that a jetway, you can't just put a jetway as a waypoint. You have to be going from one place to the other. In this case, we're going from Vero Beach to Bluffy. So that's what I was telling you before, is that you can't just put J45 as a route. It has to be a route between two points or more points. So Bluffy is going to be from Vero Beach to Bluffy on the J45. Cool. Um, and from there, we're going to go ahead and set up our approach. Remember, I set that up deliberately so that when we hit Bluffy, I can go ahead and just go to our arrival. And we're going into KFLL, for Lauderdale. And then there's our transition right there, Bluffy. And I know, like I said, for the arrival, usually you, for the arrival, you just put an estimate of what you think the runway you're going to use. And the approach, you would wait later on in the flight. But like I said, I'm using just default uh, standard weather, clear weather. So I'm just going to go ahead and land on the only 27 right. And there we go with that. Select. Now, once again, when I go through this, remember when we we're looking at that, that arrival, that arrival went all the way down to Miami. So if we followed this arrival, we'd hit Miami and then have to turn around. We don't want to do that. So we're going to delete a couple waypoints. We're going to delete Canes, and we're going to delete VKZ, and we're going to leave Heats. And then we're going to choose, and then you could put Jumar as your next waypoint if you want to, but that's going to be part of our approach. So we're going to go ahead and go to Approach. Um, go ahead and click the ILS. So we're doing the ILS into 27 right. Uh, choose Jumar, and then you have your approach set up. So now we got Jumar twice. We don't need Jumar in there twice. Uh, put the Jumar in there once. Snape, runway 27. There you go. You got it. So let me just go over the whole entire flight plan first so to make sure I didn't lose you anywhere. So we started out with our departure. We are departing Daytona Beach on runway 16, heading 162 to Jessup. To Bitho. That's part of the Lama 5 departure, the Jessup to Bitho. Then we're going from Bitho direct to Vero Beach VOR, which was the Treasure Beach VOR, which I told you, which is the Treasure one now on the charts. It originally was Vero Beach, so we're going to use Vero Beach. Vero Beach VOR, uh, the Vero Beach VOR via the J45 to Bluffy. Okay. After we hit Bluffy, we're going to go ahead and start with our arrival into Fort Lauderdale. Okay, with that arrival, we're going to hit Heat and then Jumar. From Jumar, we're going to use the ILS into 25 right from Jumar to Snape to 25 right. There it is. The whole plan, the, nut, the whole flight plan in a nutshell, just all flows together. So if you look back at the charts, which I strongly recommend looking at your charts and planning this at the same time, you'll see that it all flows kind of together. You got to do a little bit of editing here and there just to make sure you get to where you're supposed to be all on one trip, but that's fine. After that, we're going to go ahead and let's go to our plan page. Reserve fuel. Remember what I said? You need 800 pounds in reserve. Okay. Uh, and after that, you're going to go ahead and pre press the previous page to get all the way to the end. And we need to enter this payload number. This payload number comes from adding up. We're going back to the weight balance sheet. It comes from adding up the ACM, the full weight, the aft, the pod, and the closet all together. So let's look here. We got 3,500 pounds there, uh, plus 600, so that's 4,100, plus 
250 pounds. So that's 4,350 pounds altogether for our payload. So you just go ahead and add the ACM full weight aft pod and closet, which if I calculate it correct, yeah, 4,350 pounds. Yep. So I'm going to put that in there, 4,350. Enter. And now you have your gross weight at the bottom. So we'll keep that in mind for when we do our speed cards. Next, we have to go to the nav page. Um, go ahead and press enter twice, just to initialize that from runway 16 to the heading. And then our VNAV, we're going to go ahead and put our, uh, our cruising altitude, and we're going to use 20,000 for our flight today. Um, yeah, that, that will be fine for our flight. 20,000. I'll show you how to, how to change that in flight as well. Um, so that is all the FMC for you. The FMC and weight and payload, that is it right there in a nutshell. All done. I'd recommend uh, going through and just testing out, putting different stuff in there. It really just flows. If you look at the charts and you uh, just watch and look at the charts, look at how you to do it, um, manage your fuel and weight. Um, just remember, the only thing to remember with fuel and weight is that you'll burn about 1,000 to 1,200 pounds of uh, fuel per hour and uh, fuel weighs about six and a half pounds per gallon. Um, remember that for calculating your fuel. Um, and remember that you have to minus a hundred from fuel from taxi. hundred, two hundred if you're far away from where the departing taxi, uh, departing runway is and it's a big airport. Um, I usually just stick around 100 though. Uh, and that is all for this one. So I hope you enjoyed it. That is all for Program the FMC. And please rate, subscribe, uh, and comment. I want to hear everything you got to say about this. I'm hoping this one's a lot better than the one before. You don't have the noise. And I hope I uh, clarified everything up for you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment. I will answer them. Um, I really appreciate all the feedback. So uh, take it easy. Have a good, uh, have a good rest of your day.